Okay, we're back here live at Sapphire now, SAP's annual conference. We're live in Orlando, Florida. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, day one of three days of coverage. This is our wrap-up segment. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm here with the co-founder of Wookie Bond, David Florrier. I was going to say David Vellante, but <laughs> he's in Las Vegas uh, with ServiceNow, an amazing another company. And also Jeff Kelly, the number one big data analyst on the planet uh, here at Wookie Bond. Uh, Jeff, uh, David, thanks for uh, coming on the wrap-up here. Let's break this down day one. So we saw the keynote, we saw the positioning, we saw McDermott, HANA's front and center. Uh, clearly they're driving the HANA bus, um, and that's going to be um, a disruptive enabler for themselves as well as the marketplace. So, so Dave, I want to start with you. What do you think of day one? Uh, it's good. The uh, vibration is good. Uh, large number of exhibitors here. Uh, the ecosystem is very, very strong indeed uh, around uh, SAP. Uh, interesting to hear about uh, SAP HANA. It's still early days, SAP HANA. I'm not quite as bullish uh, about the long-term success of that. The data in memory uh, theme is very important. Uh, I personally think that the data in memory theme uh, needs to some, some refinement to be more data in non-volatile memory. Um, so that it can be a lower cost and l much larger amounts of data. Um, those are some refinements I'm sure that SAP are looking at and will add to, add to it. Uh, but yes, a fun day, uh, exciting day. And I think the demeanor of the SAP customers is that they're fundamentally satisfied with the status quo at the moment. Um, things are growing, um, but Underneath it, I get this slightly uneasy feeling that maybe it's looking a little bit into the future and saying, are we on the right track? The, the HANA is a good track, but are, is, is, is the whole of SAP ecosystem, is that something that's reached its uh, peak and uh, is, is going to be difficult to sustain the previous growth? Do you think um, they're putting a human face on HANA by getting out all these people from the NBA? Obviously, great marketing. I mean, I've always been impressed with SAP. You know, we're here in third year in a row where I've said, I love the show. They do a mm -hmm. great job. Their messaging is on target. It's not Jeremy Burton style messaging. It's just a lot of messaging. A it's lot more of volume. Yep. A lot of volume. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Burton at EMC, he's all about one message. They're, here they're putting out a lot of messages, but the, it hangs together. Uh, it hangs together because um, it, it is about users. It's users solving business problems, and it's very, very business focused. So it, it hangs together for that reason. People are doing it in order to become more efficient or to extend their reach or to uh, enable new ways of doing business. So yes, I, I always love uh, um, or, uh, shows where the focus is on the end users themselves. If you remember at OpenStack, it was, it was extremely good to have all of those users coming up talking about how they were using OpenStack. And here, everybody is talking about how they're using it, the business impact. Well, Absolutely, I, I would agree with that. I think you know, big data and analytics lends itself to good user stories, right? I mean, it's, it's, there's some interesting correlations people can draw with the different data sets, so it actually is, a, is an area of computing that is, uh, lends itself to really bringing customers out front and center to tell their kind of interesting stories and their journey, things like we saw with the NBA on, uh, on theCUBE today uh, and other end users uh, really driving new, new types of analytics and creating new capabilities. Not always the most sophisticated, but they're still new. I mean, the things like the MBA is doing, making analytics available to their end users, you know, this isn't uh, necessarily rocket science, but it's extremely useful to the MBA uh, as they try to continue to engage more with their user base. But I mean, these stories are compelling, and you know, OpenStack, no offense to OpenStack, we were there, we loved that conference, we were really bullish on it, David, but you know, Rackspace, is, Rackspace stock is down, and the analyst saying, "What is OpenStack?" So again, it's 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 a low, a much earlier, part earlier of the stage. Cycle, yes. So absolutely. in our last interview, we were talking to uh, John Appleby from Bluefin. He said one of the biggest challenges he sees with Hana is that people just don't know what to do with it. It's, there's compelling use cases, so they're in that formation stage. Would you agree with that, or how would you? Uh, I, I, I think it's that. a little limited, it's the problem, because you, it works for data sets which are quite, relatively quite small. So if you've got a, a, a cube of data which is small and you can really iterate through it, it works brilliantly. 
But if you've got a cube of data where, and you sometimes need to go and get some other data from somewhere else and kind of combine that, that's, and, and the, the effort to create that cube of data is pretty high as well. So if four use cases where it fits, it fits brilliantly, it's, it's very nice indeed, it really works very well indeed, but it's a limited section of the, of the, the total infrastructure. And, and if you really compare it with big data, I'd like your views on this, sure. it doesn't really meet the big data criteria of you know, terabytes and petabytes of data. Yeah, it, well, you know, it's interesting because we, we've we had this debate uh, internally when we were uh, doing our market sizing earlier this year, and you know, I think there are use cases where it fits the criteria. Um, but I, I agree with you; it's not particularly, from a volume perspective, it's nothing uh, like Hadoop. It's not. Hadoop, it's, that's it's, right, that's yeah. not. You know, it doesn't compare there yeah. um, in terms of volume of data. And I, I agree with you; it's a fairly um, the use cases. Are, are focused on, I mean, think about the SAP customer base, the ERP customer base, and so the idea of, you know, SAP talking about essentially using HANA to improve the functionality, I should say performance of, you know, their core ERP business, but that's not big data. Hmm. It's mm -hmm. beneficial to their user base, but, it's, but that's not big data. Where big data comes in is when you're starting to do some new types of analytics, some predictive analytics. So I think if you're using HANA to really drive more predictive forecasting type analytics, and you're making decisions based on those analytics, uh, particularly in real time, highly optimized to make real time decisions. You know, those are use cases that I think would fall under at least the mindset of big data, if not the strict technical Absolutely. definition. Um, but you know, again, with, I, I think the a lot of the users here are more interested in Hana to to kind of supercharge their existing ERP right. installations, which you know is is again very beneficial to them, but not particularly exciting from a big data and analytics perspective. And, and I think that fits into my observation about the future. I mean, if you look at the very large amounts of data that are coming with the streams of data that are coming mm -hmm. out, you know, we take take those uh, uh, early people with, with uh, uh, making decisions in real time about what advert is going to be created or mm -hmm. what price is going to be created or whatever it is. Those are looking at huge volumes of data coming in and then looking at those streams and making real-time decisions based on that. Mm -hmm. And that's not Hannah's sweet spot at all. So that's the sort of thing that I think uh, is going to be the future of big data and real-time analytics. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's interesting to see that they're focusing on um, their ecosystem, but the Internet of Things uh, is being pushed out way into the future. Let's talk about that. Let's yeah. drill down on that because I want to sit, highlight that Sanjay Poonin's mobile press conference was impressive because he's well, an impressive guy, real big fans of Cube alumni. Uh, but there, you know, mobiles are tough not to crack, right? You, know, you put a wrapper around something, you rebuild. Again, they're trying to put the, a good solution together. But his notable comment, David and Jeff, I want to get your take on this. I know you're both doing work at, on the infrastructure and on big data side about the Internet of Things. That's a um, a North Star in their vision. Where are we with the Internet of Things and the industrial internet, things of that nature? We're hearing a lot about it with Pivotal. W what is that, is it just puffery here? Is it, is it they have anything, have you seen anything? And what's, what's the state I, of the market? I, I, it, it really is uh, a, the, the, the wave after, uh, the, the current wave. And there's really two key issues about um, the, the Internet of Things. It's sensors and it's software. Uh, sensors to know what's going on, and those sensors can be everything from being inside machines to being inside you or me, to tell us how our heart is going or, or how our lungs are functioning. Uh, so it's, it's a potential for a huge amount of data to be coming in, and, and with it is coming new opportunities, business opportunities, not only to improve current functions, but to bring out new ways of doing business. Um, when we were at the uh, VM EMC world, uh, Paul Moritz was talking about going from talk selling engines to selling engine hours, because with all that sensing, they would know the best way of being able to um, maintain that engine, so that they could, they could commit to selling the engine hours for so many hours uh, over a period of time, a new way of doing business. Similarly with hospitals, a new way of doing business direct to the end user, uh, to you or I, as opposed to through a hospital or through something else. So 
very different ways of doing business. Um, and so where are we, Jeff? I'm going to get your comment, but I want to ask David first. Where are we in the research? I know that you guys initiated coverage uh, recently at Wikibon, which is all free, free content, by the way. Uh, go to wikibon.org for free content. Um, is it true we've initiated coverage at Wikibon on, on the Internet of Things, industrial internet? Absolutely. Where, where, can yeah. you give an update yeah. on where that's at? Well, we're, uh, we're doing uh, you know, kind of our initial research right now. We're talking to a lot of end users. Uh, we're talking to some of the vendors in the space who are going to really help build the platforms to, to make this possible. Um, but it, it's pretty early days. I think you know, a lot of the, kind of the initial wave of big data was focused on, uh, in some senses, it was, it was about social data, right? What can I do with all these tweets coming in? Which is interesting, but limited value, I think, overall to the larger uh, business role. You know, and then we were talking a little bit about, um, you know, I think people tend to talk about what can I do with my own internal data, things that I've got in my ERP system here at SAP or wherever, and maybe bringing in some, a few additional data sets. I think with the in Internet of Things or industrial internet, what we're really talking about is, is an interconnected uh, world of devices, uh, industrial level machinery, um, that, that allows us to really orchestrate whole processes, processes, if you will. So in healthcare, it's understanding that when a person with uh, certain symptoms checks in uh, or is admitted to a hospital, it kicks off a series of events uh, throughout, uh, you know, could be related to the machines that are going to be used to diagnose the patient. It could be related to the staffing of the nurses and doctors in that hospital, uh, how that's going to impact the bottom line of the hospital. So it kicks off a, sh a really, a, uh, you know, a, a number of events and uh, analytics to really optimize those processes. And ultimately the goal, if it's in healthcare, is to find efficiencies for the hospital to deliver better care for the patients. Um, in some cases, that's going to be delivering that care, that information, when the patient, before the patient even gets to the hospital, hopefully preventing them. Um, but in you know the, air, the world of aircraft, for instance, it's going to be understanding uh, your fleet as a whole. It's going to be understanding individual uh, jet engines and where they are in terms of maintenance and when they needed to be when they need to be upgraded or when you're pushing them too hard or not hard enough. And having all these systems interconnected so that they can make intelligence de decisions in real time based on uh, analysis of all the different data that's flowing through the system. So that's a very complex So what's the timetable on, on this? Obviously, we're, you're talking a lot of uh, uh, customers and other data. When are, you, when are we going to see something? Oh, it, in, it, within the next uh, four weeks, four to six weeks, uh, we should be having uh, the first uh, push out of definition, if you like, of the Internet of Things and our, uh, and our first uh, sort of uh, there you have it. If you're out there and you want to reach Wikibon, go to wikibon.org. There's a contact button there. Contact the office in, uh, in Massachusetts or David Fleur's out in California. Um, you can get him on Twitter. You can find myself or David Vellante, Jeff Kelly. We're all on Twitter. It's easy, we're easy to find with the cube as well. Um, so go to wikibon.org, by the way, free research, and go to siliconangle.com. Um, this is a wrap up of day one. We're excited to close it out. And thank you for watching and stay tuned tomorrow. We got coverage all day tomorrow and Thursday. This is theCUBE wrapping up day one. That's a wrap, we'll see you tomorrow.